Okay. What's uh, what great encouragement received last week from uh, Reverend Sarah Donna Maria as she shared about you know the seventh year and the replenishing of the ground and and how it's a year of pause uh, 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 as we celebrated you know our seventh year anniversary last year and just uh, we'll continue to move forward and trusting in the Lord and just uh, allow Him to do whatever He wants to do through this ministry. And through our lives. I was speaking to a brother this week. He called me up. You know a little actually. Excited and like encouraged. And you know what he told me next. After I heard his voice. Didn't really go together normally. But he said hey pastor. I just want to let you know. Uh, they actually let me go. My job. You know they, they, they eliminated my position. But he, he sounded kind of like. Happy and okay with it. Again, you don't normally hear that. Some people know I lost my job. Um, um, but we were sharing and dialoguing, and, and he was telling me why. He shared that he felt like this was God's plan all along because some months back he was going to transition jobs, and the other job didn't work out, so he stayed with this one but felt like he still had to move on and just saw how God worked it all out you know, through the whole you know, shut down and everything. And then he went on to share a whole bunch of other things, just saying how God was there in so many areas of his life, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, financially, relationally. He was there in the little things and in the big things. And he was just there in everything. And I shared with him, God's there in all areas. God is at every category, every situation, every challenge, every problem, every good thing type of God. So when I hung up with him, I was reflecting on these last seven years and all that's been going on and just how faithful the Lord has been. And in case you don't know it, we started this church in 2013. It was in Hackensack, about a mile from here. It was Saturday nights and after three years, we had a transition, and we moved here. When we moved, we changed the Sundays, and nobody came with us. At the time, we were getting some financial assistance from a, our, our sister church, mother church at that time, and uh, that no longer was happening either. So we were going to move to a new place with no money and no people. See, but when God's involved, Okay, when God's there with you and God's the one guiding you, He works it all out. He does, He does. And it wasn't until probably maybe a year later here in this building with just ten people that came part of our ministry team and one couple that... We had, we had two congregants at that time. Roy and Josie Miller. <laughs> that was it. They used to sit right here in the front and they would be there and some of our team would be sitting in other places and that's all there was month after month, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We went into the new year. Just then, people started coming. God is so faithful. And from that time to now, he has covered every situation, every area, Amen. every single thing. And I don't just mean finances. I'm talking people, relationships, empowerments, callings, giftings. Every area, provision, every everything. So I wanted to speak about something today. I wanted to speak about who your source is. That's good. Who, who, who's our source? And that's what I titled the message today. Who's our source? Because I'm telling you, listen, I'll put my hand up first, two hands, and whatever. Sometimes God's not my first source. John is, and the things that I know are, and the things that I can find out quickly are. And there's nothing wrong with those things. I just got to go to the first and main source all the time. So you could stand, take out your Bibles. We're going to read one verse. I know. One verse only. It's 1 Corinthians 8, verse 6. This is the amplified version. This is Paul the Apostle. Letting us know who our source is. Yet for us there is but one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. 
and we exist for him. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things that have been created. And we believers exist and have life and have been redeemed through him. Amen. Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for being the source of all things. Thank you, Jesus, for redeeming our souls. Thank you, Lord, that we exist for you. As we prayed before, we're Christians first. Paul, the apostle, shows us it's not I that live or we that live, but you that live in us. We were bought with a price. Let your word come forth now with clarity. We love you and praise you in your name. Amen. You may be seated if you're standing. Heaven is the source of all things. Here on earth, we receive it all through Jesus. Listen, listen. Some people right now are facing overwhelming needs in the body of Christ. Okay? Emotional, physical, spiritual, financial, social issues. Okay? Every single thing you could think of right now is going on. So we need the right source. We need our Heavenly Father. We need the Word of God. We need Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit to rise up like never before. And we have to look to Him. Look to His Word. Look to the heavenlies for these provisions. Because I don't know if anyone's noticed. Nothing else out there is working. <laughs> okay? Listen, you can, you can put the big circle with that red thing through it across the board. Because nothing's working right now. And I believe my little own personal opinion is God's allowing all of it just for that reason. Mm -hmm. That we would turn back to the source. Mm -hmm. We would turn back to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Remember, we're a godly founded nation. And if you think he's pleased with the things that were going on before all this was happening, no, he's not. He's a God that, listen, he's a loving God, but he's also a holy and righteous God. That's right. Don't confuse grace, mercy, and love and keep holiness and righteousness over here because all five of them work together. But he wants to provide for his children. Yes, he does. He wants to provide all that we need. Philippians 4.19, Amplified Version. We read it every week. Listen, listen. And my God will liberally supply, fill into full. Listen, look, 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 look. Fill into full. Your every need according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. He's our source. I heard it said, you know, I read different things and heard different pastors share things that, you know, everyone sees God differently depending on where they're from. You know, whether you're from the southern part of the U.S. or the, the Midwest or, or the, you know, the West or, or northern areas, that, that people all see God differently. Now, I understand what they're trying to say. You know, depending on where you come from, that's how you learn about who God is. I'm just telling you this. To me, he's simply the God of the Bible. He's not the God of my grandmother. He's not the God of my aunt, my uncle, my cousin, my parents. He's not that God. He's the God of the Bible. Okay? He's not the God that someone just tells me about. He's the God that I can find out about. He's not the God that somebody just misinterprets some scripture about when I can just go to that and get the proper interpretation. That's the God that he is. Now listen, I understand that a young child finds out about God from their parent or their guardian. I'm aware of that. So you know what that means, parent or guardian? You better know who God is so we can teach them properly. Because if we teach the kids that he's the God of just love, then they're going to forget about going through some pain and challenges and they'll turn from God. If we tell them he's just the God of financial resources, then when they're broke and poor, they'll think he's not the God or who he is. You guys with me on that? So we have to find out who he really is and we find out through the word of God. And he's the God of all sources. He's the God of all resources. He's the God of every provision that we need. Spiritual, mental, emotional, relational, every other thing you can put on there. It's in this book. That's the God he is. He covers every aspect, every avenue, every little corner of our brains and our hearts. It goes
because he's perfect. And everything he gives us comes from the most perfect place ever, heaven. James 1.17 says this, every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, the creator and sustainer of the heavens, in whom there is no variation, no rising or setting, or shadow cast by his turning, for he is perfect and never changes. We don't just get the gift, we get the perfect gift, the perfect provision in every area of our lives. We must trust God and believe in his provision, okay? One of the biggest challenges that I see all the time, and remember, I said it first, is we look other places for other for the things that God has waiting for us. If we would just look to Him first, His heavenly resource will come to us. And I'm not just talking about monetary things here. Every area. God has healed my heart, changed my mind, changed my thoughts, changed my ways, provided for me, helped me do things for other people. Okay? Change how I see things, how I think about things, how my heart has been hardened, he's healed that. Okay? I can just go on and on of all the things God has done, all the areas that he covers in a son or daughter's life. Heavenly resources, perfect things. 1 Corinthians 7, 31. Those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them. For this world, as we know it, will soon pass away. Be careful where you're getting your direction from. Be careful where we're getting our resources from. Okay? As Christians, we look in the wrong places sometimes. Because we're, we're used to just Googling something real fast or researching it or contacting a professional for it. And listen, don't get me wrong. Those things are okay. Just go to God first. He, he might just give you something. He might give you that key direction. You'll have someone knock on your door and bring you something. You'll get a phone call. Yesterday I was trying to get a confirmation for this message. And somebody sent me something yesterday knows nothing about anything. And I was like, there it is. Heavenly resources. He's my source. Showing me about this message. God wants us to know that he's the source. Stop looking to this world. Listen, FYI. It ain't looking too pretty out there, okay? You look to that, you're going to get some turmoil and destruction right now, okay? We have to look to God. Down on our knees, asking him, please, God, show me your way. Send me your source. Show me who you are more. Listen, if a pipe busts in your house, you don't call the electrician, okay? You call Angie, let's not more kidding. Listen to me. Listen to me. You call the plumber. He's the expert. And FYI, God's the expert on everything because he created everything. He's the one who moves the pieces around. He's the one who's got it all planned out. That's right. And that's what our focus needs to be, Come on. that he's our source. We're going to look at some things right now, and this is only some of them, okay? Okay, we're going to look at some of the names of God, the titles of God, the attributes of God, the descriptions of God, and the characteristics of God. Now listen, there's way too much for me to read all the verses. So I'm just going to read the definitions. And man, we might have to get a little extra time today. Instagram, you might get cut off. It's only one hour. I hope not. But listen to me. I'm going to go through them quickly. But we're going to learn a little more about who God is, who this main source is, who our source is. And again, I'm going to read the definitions. There'll be scripture references. I'm going to email all this out tomorrow. So look at the word of God on your own. I encourage you to. But let's jump into this. First, he's God Jehovah. Listen, the name of the independent, self-complete being, I am who I am, only belongs to Jehovah God. Our proper response to him is to fall down with fear and awe of the one who possesses all authority. So there's your first source. He's all authority. You want to know what to do? Ask the, the, the full authority. Ask God all authority. He'll show us. Exodus 3, 13 through 15 shows us that. He's God, Jehovah, Midesh. Listen, this name means the God who sanctifies. And God separates from all that is evil, requires that people who follow him be cleansed from all evil. 
And there's the scripture references. He's God infinite. God is beyond measurement. Listen, we cannot define him by size or amount. He has no beginning, no end. And I love this part. No limits. So if you're looking for something, look for the one who gives us stuff unlimitedly. Come on, that's the God we are served. He's the source. He's God omnipotent. This means God all powerful. He spoke all things into being, and all things, every cell, every breath, every thought, are sustained by Him. There is nothing too difficult for Him to do. You think it's too hard? Ask God, okay? If you think it can't happen, ask God. If you can't figure it out, because He's the one who put it all together, ask God. Let's keep going. God is good. God is the embodiment of perfect goodness and is kind, benevolent, and full of good will toward all creation. There's the scripture references there. Listen, listen. God is love. God's love is so great that he gave his only son to bring us into fellowship with him. God's love not only encompasses the world, but embraces each of us personally and intimately through Jesus Christ. There's the reference. He's God Jehovah Jireh. This name means the God who provides. Just as he provided yesterday, he will also provide today and tomorrow. You're looking for something? Ask the source. Ask the source. He grants deliverance from sin. Listen, the oil of joy for the ashes of sorrow and eternal citizenship in his kingdom for all those adopted into his household. See, we're children of God now. We're children of God. He's God Jehovah Shalom. This name means the God of peace. We are meant to know the fullness of God's perfect peace or his shalom. God's peace surpasses understanding and sustains us even through difficult times. It is the product of fully being what we are created to be. See, we were created to be people of peace. Remember that when you're ready to say something you shouldn't say. Remember that when you're ready to respond to something you don't need to respond to. Remember that when you're ready to forward a post that just ain't peaceful and loving and God. Listen, he's God immutable. All that God is, he has always been. All that he has been and is, he will ever be. He is ever perfect and unchanging. Psalms 102, 25 through 28. God is transcendent, meaning beyond or above the range of normal or merely physical human experience. Listen, we must not think of God as simply the highest in order of beings. This would be to grant him eminency. Listen, but he's more than eminent. Listen, he's transcendent, existing beyond and above the created universe. He's not part of what we are part of. He's the one who made it all. Psalms 14, 113, 4 and 5. God is just. Listen, God is righteous and holy, fair and equitably in all things. We can trust him to always do what's right. Okay. FYI, whatever's going on, if it's from God, it's right and perfect, wow. even if we don't like it. Wow. Even if we're swearing on God, why'd you do all that? He said, hey, man, that's the perfect thing I got for you. Stay still and you'll, you'll catch it. Stop swarming. Stop moving. Let me do what I want to do in your life. Let me do what I want to do in your heart. Let me help change you. Let me help mold you. Let me help grow you. Let me hold you while I do it all. Because I'm the God of all love and all peace. And I'm transcendent. And I'm above everything. Because I've created everything. God is holy. Listen. God's holiness is not simply a, a better version of the best we know. God is utterly and supremely untainted. His holiness stands apart, unique, and incomprehensible. Okay? He's the cleanest, purest thing ever. Read the verses. God, Jehovah Rophe. This name means Jehovah heals. 
God alone provides the remedy for mankind's brokenness through his son, Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, listen. The gospel is the physical, moral, spiritual remedy for all people. Listen to that again. The gospel is the physical, moral, and spiritual remedy for all people. For all people. God is self-sufficient. All things are God's to give. And all thing is given. I'm sorry. All things are God's to give. And all that is given is given by Him. He can receive nothing that is not already given. Acts 17, 24-28. God is omniscient. Listen, this means God is all-knowing. God's knowledge encompasses every possible thing that exists, has ever existed, or will ever exist. Nothing is a mystery to him. Psalms 139, 1-6. FYI, if he's omniscient, why don't we go to him first? Why don't we go to the source of all sources? The source who gave us all the other sources. He's omnipresent. God is everywhere. In, in and around everything. Close to everyone. Do not, I'm sorry, do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord in Psalms 139, 7 through 12. God is merciful. Listen, God's merciful compassion is infinite and inexhaustible through his provision in Christ. Listen, he took the judgment that was rightfully ours and placed it on his own shoulders. He waits and works now for all people to turn to him and to live under his justification. Come on, he's all mercy. He took on our sin while we were still sinners. Dirty, wretched people. God is sovereign. God presides over every event, great or small. And he is in control of our lives. To be sovereign, he must be all-knowing and all-powerful. And by his sovereignty, he rules his entire creation. Why would you not want to turn to that? Who, who would not want? Why, why would I Google it when I can... When I can just go to him. Okay? Why would I research it when I can just go to him? Why would I ask him of a professional when he's the all-knowing professional of every single thing ever? Ever? I hope you're getting to know him better right now. Listen, he's Jehovah Nisi. This means he's God our banner. Under his banner, we go from triumph to triumph and say, Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's our banner. Yes. He just, 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 just stop for a second. Just, just right. get your mind out. Right. He like, he waves over us. He's like, I got you covered. You're gonna get victory. It may not look like victory. You may look like you're losing, but I want to tell you, you already won. You already won through my son on that cross. God is wise. All God's acts are accomplished through His infinite wisdom. He always acts for our good, which is to conform us to Christ. Our good and His glory cannot be separated. God is faithful. Listen, out of His faithfulness, God honors His covenant and fulfills His promises. Our hope for the future rests upon God's faithfulness. God is wrathful. You may not like this one, but listen. Unlike human anger, God's wrath is never sudden, self-indulgent, or irritable. It is the right and necessary reaction to objective moral evil. Come on. God's full of grace. Grace is God's good pleasure that moves him to grant merit where it is undeserved and to forgive debt we cannot repay. God is our comforter. Jesus called the Holy Spirit the comforter. The apostle Paul writes that the Lord, the God of all comfort. God is El Shaddai. His name means God Almighty. The God who is all sufficient, all bountiful, the source of every yeah. blessing. Yeah. Want to get blessed? Ask the source. God is Father. Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father and the Spirit of God taught us to cry, Abba Father. An intimate Aramaic term similar to Daddy. The creator of the universe cares for each of us as we are the only child he has. 
God is the church's head. God the Son, Jesus, is the head of the church as the head, the part of the body that sees, hears, thinks, and decides. He gives the orders that rest on the bodies that live for Him. God is our intercessor, knowing our temptation. God the Son intercedes for us. He opens the door for us to boldly ask God the Father for mercy. Thus, God is both the initiation and conclusion of every true prayer. Ask the source. He's the source of all. God is Adonai. That name means Master and Lord. God or Adonai calls all God's people to acknowledge themselves as His servants, as His children, claiming His right to reign as Lord over our lives. God is Elohim. This means strength or power. He transcends mighty and strong. Elohim is the great name of God, displaying supreme power, sovereignty, and faithfulness in the covenant with the relationship with his children. I mean, I don't know, anybody else getting to know him better right now? Come on now. You get, you're, getting to know, you're getting to know him a little better right now. Come on, come on, come on. He's our source. He's our source. He loves us. He's there for us. He's got every single thing covered. We just have to seek his word and seek his face to find out what those things are. I'm going to close with this video. Make sure you look at these verses tomorrow. We're going to email the notes out, the recordings out, the audio and video, the YouTube stuff. Look at the verses. Let the word of God show you what these definitions, how they uphold them, and how they, they are the platform for the things we're sharing today. Let's watch this video and then I'll close out. Isaiah 9 says, says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us, the root and offspring of David, the Lamb of God, the Good Shepherd, the arm of the Lord, the rock of ages, the cornerstone, the author and finisher of our faith. His name shall be called the first and the last, the beginning and the ending, the alpha and the omega, the creator, the great I am, the holy one, the way, the truth, and the life, the Redeemer, the Savior, my Lord and my God, Lord of glory, Lord of lords, King of kings, the almighty God. Come on. His name is Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved come on bless the lord bless the lord listen i've read 25 there must have been another 20 right in that little video he's the source of everything mm -hmm. we just got to get to know him okay Listen, I'm going to just quickly, he's Jehovah the great I am. He's Jehovah Medes, the God who sanctifies. He's infinite. He's omnipotent. He's good. He's love. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He's Jehovah Shalom, who God of peace. He's immutable. He's transcendent. He's just. He's holy. He's Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. He's self-sufficient. He's omniscient. He's all knowledge. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. He's merciful. He's sovereign. He's Jehovah.
only source for salvation. So if you're watching today, or you're going to hear this, he's the one who saves. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. He's Jesus, the Christ, the Lord. He's the Messiah. He's the, he's the perfect lamb. Okay? He's the one that was slain to redeem us of our sins, to save our souls. He's the only source. You can't Google this. He's the only source for salvation. You can't Google that. He's the only source for salvation. You can't get it anywhere else. So Father, I pray if anyone's watching now or going to watch this in the future, they would know that you came and you sent your son to die on a cross to save our wretched, sinful souls. And that today can be their day. Today can be the day that the source of salvation comes into their lives. And they would say, Jesus, Messiah, whatever it is they're calling you, I, I heard you died on a cross to save my sinful soul. I, I want you to come into my life today. Could you just come today? And I'd like you to start being my comforter, my guider. I'd like you to start being my source of all things, especially eternity. I accept you into my heart and life. If you prayed that prayer, you had those thoughts, and that's your mindset and heart set, and it's real. I, I pray that you connect with a church. A Bible-believing, God-loving church that can disciple you and give you the wisdom and the tools that you need to receive all the sources. I pray if you've been... Yeah, I'm just going to keep it real. Playing games, man. Fooling around with God. How can you fool around with God? I don't even understand that, okay? I'm not talking about being you know, a little off here and there. I'm talking about just stepping away from the... The Bible says tasting good to see that... The Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good. I've tasted right off the bat, and I like what I tasted. I pray I never stray. But if you have, get back on track today. And I pray for everyone else watching this message that you're reminded that God's the source. Okay? He's the source of all things. So, so seek him first in all that you do. Let him guide you. God bless you all. Have an amazing day.